Hi there. This is the review session for the third midterm. So as with the others, it'll be 8 till 8.30 on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays of week 13. Um, and uh, the answer submission is online. If you have problems, then send the answers immediately to Jiayi this time or myself if you can't find her email. And then we'll figure out exactly what to do with that. Um, the material for this portion of the class is the stuff on energy equation, dimensional analysis of week nine, and pipe flow of weeks 10 and 11. 11.3 11, is networks, but it's, so it doesn't include that, but it does include type one, two, and three uh, solutions for, for flow problems. Um, there are three questions. Uh, the Monday question is on the energy equation um, from week eight. The Wednesday question is on pipe flow with also um, a reference to manometry from week uh, two. And the Friday question is on dimensional analysis. And so those are the, the topical areas. Uh, and those are for the uh, scheduled exam. Um, the conflict exam would potentially be on something uh, different in terms of specifics. Um, in terms of week eight stuff, uh, the energy equation you'll recall is just the same as Bernoulli's equation, except that it includes terms for input of energy in pump head and uh, frictional losses within the system due to head losses, which can be either minor losses within pipes and fittings, which are constant uh, and defined in the turbulent regime, or for major losses within pipes, which are a function of a friction factor, the length of pipe divided by the dam diameter, and the velocity uh, head term, including the velocity actually in the fitting or the pipe. So that's the key is that this isn't an entrance or an exit uh, velocity, but it's actually the velocity within the fitting of the pipe. Um, pump heads can be defined in terms of input as a, a pump or as output as a turbine. They change sign. And the pump head, which is a length, is defined in terms of power, which is in watts, divided by mass flow rate and G, or mass flow rate is just density of the fluid multiplied by the um, volumetric flow rate and then multiplied by G again um, as the denominator of the, the power. And so if you want to know what power is, you find out what the pump head is and you multiply it by the numerator and you have that. Uh, in terms of the energy equation, it has to be written between upstream and downstream. And so the upstream has to be the one with the pump head on it and the downstream has to be the one with the head losses on it. The schematic of the stream tube gives a, a flow velocity and a cross-sectional area. Usually that flow velocity and cross-sectional area are, or rather the cross-sectional area is constant. And if that's the case, then the velocity through the system will also be constant. And so if it's a pipe, that's certainly the case, that the upstream area and the downstream area will be the same. And the meaning of the energy equation in terms of pressure head, elevation head, and velocity head you can think of as flow within a pipe between an upstream location, I guess this is the upstream location, and a downstream location that includes elevation head, pressure head up to the top level of a tank, and the velocity head, which would be constant across the system. And this includes an input by a pump and an output by a turbine, if it happens to exist, and the output in terms of head losses. So this may exist, these, either one of these may exist or may not exist. If there's no turbine in the system, then clearly the pump losses are just this full amount between um, the horizontal energy grade line and the revised energy grade line with uh, the losses included in it. The fact that you're losing energy as you go downstream. Um, in terms of minor and major losses, we know uh, that the friction factor defines the loss per unit length of pipe. Um, the flow equations for a pipe are determined in terms of diameter of the pipe, the length of the pipe, a relative roughness. Um, velocity is always the volumetric flow rate divided by the area. And in terms of the friction factor that we have here, that's defined in terms of um, Reynolds number. And so we need to have the right flow regime to be able to uh, have the right magnitude of the friction factor. The flow regimes are two-fold. They're either laminar at low velocities or turbulent above the Reynolds number of about 2,000. 
and they have different characteristics. Um, in laminar flow, the uh, friction factor is a function of Reynolds number, actually a function of 1 over Reynolds number. 64 over RE, or some constant divided by Reynolds number, where this is something like 64, but not necessarily exactly that number. And in the turbulent regime, the friction factor is a function only of roughness. Large magnitudes of roughness are up here, and small magnitudes of roughness are down here. And there's also a curve that represents a smooth uh, pipe where the roughness is equal to zero in here. But there's this break in behavior between laminar and turbulent, um, and these different characteristics point to different ways of being able to evaluate flow velocities or diameters of pipe, as we've talked about in class. Um, for type 1 flow problems, typically you're given a velocity, and you can calculate from that velocity a unique Reynolds number if you know the diameter. And from that Reynolds number, you can define a unique uh, friction factor so long as you know which regime you're in, whether you're in um, laminar or turbulent. And, but also for type 2 um, behaviors, type 2 and type 3 behaviors, you can work between the parameters you know, again using the same expressions, which are really just this head loss term as a function of uh, velocity squared. Um, I guess the other thing that we know here is that the head loss, if you think of that as a pressure drop, if you look in the, the laminar regime, then the head loss is proportional to uh, velocity because this friction factor is a function of 1 over Reynolds number. And so that means that the, one of the velocity terms here cancels out. And if you look in the turbulent regime, then the head loss that you have in the system is proportional to V squared, as you see here. And so the ramifications of that are that if you double the head loss in the system that's laminar, you double the flow velocity. But if you double the head loss across a system which is turbulent, you only increase the flow velocity by square root of 2. Rather than, so that's a useful thing to be aware of. If you look at manometry, manometry you can actually use uh, Bernoulli's law to be able to figure out how pressures change as you go from one location in a manometer to the other, in that the fluids in here are static, so the velocity terms drop out, um, and therefore you're left just with elevations and pressures. You know that if you go across from here, then the pressure at this location has to be exactly the same because you're at the same elevation at these two points. And so you can use manometry to be able to define pressure differential in this particular case, which would just be given by this height um, multiplied by the unit weight of the fluid in this particular case. Uh, we know that when you go up within the fluid, the pressures go down. If you go down in the fluid, the pressures go up, etc. If you go in a gas, um, the gas has a, such a low density that you don't change, care about going up or down. And if it's evacuated, you have to work with the um, vapor pressure. But I don't think you need um, either of those concepts for this time around. Uh, week 9 topic, uh, Buckingham Pi. Uh, Buckingham Pi is a a mechanism to be able to evaluate um, non-dimensional parameters for dimensional analysis. It relies on the fact that you have so many groups present within your uh, uh, individual parameters that describe your system. We did an example with uh, flow in a pipe. And so if you have mass, length, and time all present, then k is equal to 3. If the number of parameters such as pressure, velocity, density, viscosity, that you have in your system is given by n, then n minus k are the number of pi groups that you have in your system. So if you have five parameters that define your system and you have ml and t all present, then 5 minus uh, 3 gives you two pi groups that will describe the behavior. And so usually in the question you're given um, the repeating variables because if you don't get given the repeating variables, you can get any potential uh, pi groups out of it. So you're given these and you're given the individual ones to advance. So these are three, these are the other two that are present within these two pi groups. You solve for the values of the exponents which operate on those and these give you the individual pi groups, pi 1 and pi 2. And then those are non-dimensional groups, they have no units, which you can then use in models to enforce similitude. Similitude in three forms. Ge geometric similitude is that the system that you have 
physically has to scale. So if you have an airplane, uh, it's a prototype in the model, all the relative dimensions of the ratio to the wing width and the wing length and the fuselage length all have to match up. So it looks the same uh, geometrically uh, in both model and prototype. You have to enforce kinematic similitude and that usually means, always means, that the Reynolds numbers of the prototype and the model have to be the same. That means the flow regime around it or in the pipe or around the um, uh, turbine blade is in the identical regime. And then if that's satisfied, then universally you can apply dynamic similitude, which means that the Euler number of the model and the Euler number of the prototype are the same. And so you can just equate them and you can uh, evaluate parameters from the behavior of a model into what the prototype would do. And of course, the classic exposition of this is what we've been looking at in terms of pipe flow, where kinematic similitude is enforced by being at the right Reynolds number. So if you're the right Reynolds number, then you know you're in the right flow regime. And from that, you can pull out the value from your Euler number. And the Euler number is typically something that is a pressure divided by a density times a velocity squared term. And so if you know what the velocity is in your prototype, the density of the fluid, then typically you can calculate what the pressure is that's acting in it. In a pipe, it's the pressure driving flow from upstream to downstream. If it's on a structure, it's the pressure that's pushing that structure over. But the process is the same, is that you can use typically these two parameters, kinematic similitude and dynamic similitude, to draw um, relationships between the model and the prototype. And I think that's it. So.